Hello, this is Jeff at Magical Fruit Toots. This is part two of Divide a Circle into Equal Curved Segments using Photoshop. In part one, we first made a circle with one group of segments. We then added a second group of segments. This video continues where the first video left off. We will create an interesting symmetrical design similar to a mandala. I will show you how to add inner circles, add inner wedges, add shapes, and add textures and gradients. You can vary all of these to meet your own needs. The possibilities are endless. We will start off where we left off in the first video. If you need to, you can click the link in this video to access the first video. If your rulers are not already center placed, select View Rulers from the menu. Drag your vertical and horizontal ruler guides towards the center of the circle. They should snap into place. Select black as your foreground color. Choose 9 as your brush size. Choose the ellipse tool. In the settings for the ellipse tool, make sure that path is chosen. Also make sure that circle and from center is chosen. Make a new layer and name it Inner Circles. Zoom in to the center of the circle. While still in the ellipse tool, hover your cursor over the center of the circle. Now drag out a small circle Right-click and choose Stroke Path. Then press Escape twice to deselect the path. Repeat the process to make the next largest circle. Zoom out a little and then repeat the process for the third circle. Next we will add some inner wedges to the circle. In order to see what we're doing better, we need to reduce the opacity of the layers. Select the top layer, then shift click the bottom layer, then press the number 5 on the keyboard. This should reduce the opacity of all the layers to 50%. Now add a new layer, call it wedges. As before, make sure black is the foreground color and you're using a 9 pixel hard round brush. Select your pen tool. Zoom in a little. Left click the mouse to select your starting point. Then click the ending point. Drag to get your desired curve. Right click and select stroke path. Click OK. Press escape twice to deselect the path. At this point, go to your brush tool and change its width to one pixel. Next, we want to zoom in as far as we can, and with that one pixel brush, place a dot right in the middle of the center of the circle. I have found that working on the second or third segment to the right of the circle top seems to get the best results. Now that one wedge is placed where we want it, we will start a multiple transform procedure. Press Ctrl T to enter the transform tool. Notice that the bottom left hand corner of the bounding box is in the center of the circle. 
This means we should click the bottom left hand dot of the reference point grid. Our reference chart shows 15 degrees of rotation to be used for a 24 segment circle. I am using a 24 segment circle. However, you may use as many as you like. Here is a chart showing degrees of rotation for a given number of segments. Enter 15 in the degrees of rotation area. Press enter twice. Now press Control Alt Shift and T 23 times. With your top wedge layer selected, shift click on the bottom wedge layer. Right click and select Convert to Smart Object. An alternative would be Merge Layers. Now zoom in to the center of the circle. Select your Move tool. Then use your arrow keys to nudge the smart object to the center of the circle. Click anywhere on the screen to deselect the Move tool. Next we will add shapes to the outer and middle ring of the circle. You can add more than two if you like. The procedure is the same. Make your foreground color black and your brush four pixels and hard round. Choose the Custom Shape tool. In the Custom Shape settings, make sure Path is chosen. Also choose the 10 point star frame or whatever shape you want. If you don't have the 10 point star in your shapes list, you need to load in a new group of shapes. Go to the settings of your Custom Shapes tool. Click on the drop down. Click the little arrow to the right of the shapes box. Then choose Shapes from the list. Click a pen to add this group to the available shapes. Add a new layer and name it Star. With the shape tool still active, place your cursor over one of the segments of the outer ring. Hold down Shift and Alt and drag it out to size. If you do not have a Paths panel or tab, click Windows Paths to get one. Select the Paths panel. Right click and choose Stroke Path. Click Escape twice. Click the Layers tab to go back to your Layers panel. Now we will place the second shape. Make a new layer called Wave. Select the Custom Shape tool. In the settings, make sure Path is selected. Choose the Waves shape. If you don't have the Waves shape in your Shapes list, you need to append it. Follow the same procedure we used for the 10 point star, but in this case, we're using a Nature group. The sun we use later in the center of the circle is also in the Nature group. Use the color picker to change your foreground color to F7B517. Make sure your brush is 4 pixels and hard round. Drag out your shape as before. Choose your Path tab, then right click and choose Fill Path, then select OK. Press Escape twice to deselect the path. Choose the Layers tab to return to your Layers panel. Press V or open the Move tool. Now use the cursor or arrows keys to adjust the shape. Since I knew this shape was going to be a yellow color, I colored it now before reproducing it 24 times. This saves work later. Next, we will color the star layer. Select the star layer, then while holding down control, add a new layer. This will place a new layer directly below the star layer. Rename this layer Star Color. 
use your color picker to change the foreground color to F7 DF17. Choose your brush tool, then zoom out to the star. Start coloring the inside of the star yellow. Take your time here, as any mistake you make will be carried forward 24 times. Now use your color picker to select a blue color, 329BF4. Now start painting the outer ring of the star blue. I've sped up the video to save time. Because your paint layer is below the design, paint touching the black lines will be behind them. If you don't have or don't want to use the star shape, use any regular shape and follow the same method we use next for the wave. Select the waves layer. Shift click on the star color layer. Now right click and select merge layers. Rename the merged layer shapes. Select the brush tool. Make its size one pixel. Zoom into the center of the circle. Using your brush tool, place a dot directly in the center. Zoom back out. Select the free transform tool. Notice that the bottom left hand corner of the bounding box should be the axis of rotation. Therefore, we will be using a dot in the reference point grid in the bottom left hand corner. Enter 15 in the degrees, then press Enter twice. Now press Control, Alt, Shift, and T 23 times. Select the top shape layer. Shift click on the bottom shape layer, then right click and select Convert to Smart Object. Select the Move tool. Zoom in to the center of the circle. Using your arrow keys, nudge the shape layer to the center of the circle. It's a good idea to do this regularly. Choose the Wedges layer. Click on the wedges layer. Now shift click on the circles layer. Adjust the opacity to 100%. We're now ready for final texturing and coloring. Make a new layer below all the other previous layers. Name it color. Use your paintbrush to paint in the color layer as shown. Colors can be approximate. Change your paintbrush to one pixel. Zoom into the center of the circle and place a one pixel dot exactly in the middle. Go to your free transform tool. As before we're using the lower left hand corner of the reference grid and 15 degrees. Press enter twice then press control alt shift and T. 23 times. With the top color layer selected, go down to the bottom color layer and shift click it. Right click and then choose Convert to Smart Object. Choose the Move tool, then zoom in and nudge the color layer to the center. Select the bottom background layer. Click the Add Layer icon to put a layer above it. Name the layer Gradient. Change the foreground color to 50CFF3. Select your Ellipse tool. Place it over the center and drag out as indicated. Right click and select Fill Path, then click OK. Press Escape twice to deselect the path.
Diffuse Effects Gradient Overlay. Use the black-white gradient. Use the settings as shown. Change your foreground color to EEA 635. Select the top layer. Click the Add New Layer icon to add a new layer above the top layer. Name this layer Mid-Circle. Select the Ellipse tool. Drag out a circle as indicated. Right click on the circle and indicate Fill Path. Select OK to fill with foreground color. Press Escape twice to deselect the path. Add a new layer at the top of the layer stack. Name it Little Circle. Change your foreground color to F7E230. Select your ellipse tool. Drag out a small circle as shown. Right click the circle. Select Fill Path. Click OK to accept the foreground color. Press Escape twice to deselect the path. Change your foreground color to EE751D. Add a new layer on the top of the stack. Name it Sun. Choose the Custom Shape tool. In the settings, choose Sun 1 or choose what you desire. Drag the shape out in the center of the yellow circle. Let go of the mouse and go to the Paths tab. Right click and choose Fill Path. Press OK to select the foreground color. Press Escape twice to release the path. Change the foreground color to 7A2A0F. Select View, Clear Guides to remove the ruler guides. Make sure the background layer is unlocked. Then while it is selected, press Alt and Backspace to apply the foreground color. Here is our final picture. I hope you can use these procedures to develop some new and interesting designs. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to stay updated on any forthcoming videos.